I'm going to show you a little bit about how you map in some uh, mesh with some accurate shaping to an area and we're going to use the arm right here as an example you can see the hands and you know the arm we're just going to do the a part of the arm and a lot of people working with this are not really sure how to do it and it's really very simple although it does take some time the first thing that you're going to do and I'm going to bring layers out here for you uh, is the layers palette. Now, I've, I've flattened my previously multi-layered uh, mesh uh, girl that I made but I flattened it down to one image so I can show you how uh, I typically do this. And we're going to treat this like the uh, the piece of artwork that I laid in to mesh this whole uh, portrait. The first thing I typically do is I'm just going to lock that layer. So now the layer with the girl on it is locked, the original layer. And I'll bring this up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer sitting right on top of it. And that's the layer that I'm going to add my mesh. So what I'm going to do now is come over here and I'm going to pull this aside just a little so you can see part of it. And the first thing I'm going to do is draw myself a square. And it really doesn't matter what shape I'm going to do. This could be an arm, a toe, a finger, it could be a copper pipe that bends and twists that starts out a square. The first thing I'm going to do when I have this is make sure, and this is how I do it, I make sure I color it white fill with a black stroke. That's going to help me later on as I'm laying in my points for color uh, because as I lay in the points I can see when I select a point this will turn white and I know I have grabbed a point that has not been colorized yet. So the first thing I'm going to do here to do to start the reshaping is I'm going to get my mesh selection tool or mesh creation tool and I'm going to click right on the center of that square. And it gave me the start of a mesh. Now, as you can also see, I can't wherever I put this see the image underneath. That's as simple as coming over to your eye and holding down the uh, Apple button and just clicking once on it and it's going to bring that that layer to a wireframe preview. If I click off you can see it and it just looks like the wireframe and it's laying on top of the photograph. But now let's start reshaping. First thing I always do is I put the critical points near the critical points and I want this to start out right about there. I want this point to be there, I'm going to want this point to be there I'm probably going to want this point somewhere around here. I'm going to bring this one somewhere down there, this one somewhere down there, here. And I'm also imagining the arm as it's shaped in three dimension. And I'm going to bring, I guess I'll bring this all the way down here, here, and here. Now I could see, or I should say, now I could start to do the more accurate fine tuning. I'm just going to zoom in and I'm going to put the mesh points right where I need them but as I do it I'm going to shape them into position. This one here I'm going to put right here. Now I know I need a point right there and I'm actually going to put that in now. Now I'm not just going to put a point anywhere I'm going to put the point right where I think it's in between and now you can see that it drew the mesh all the way down the arm. So now I can take this point, bring it up to position, rotate, rotate the uh, toggle so it has a nice little curve. And you can see right here, it's if I move this one, it moves the other one, and I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my reshaping tool and now I have full control over that point. So now I have this curve and this curve perfect. I can go back to my clear arrow and start putting in more points. Now right here I'm going to want a point right there so I'm going to start adding those points in right now. So I'm going to get my mesh tool again and I'm going to click and I'm going to... Now if I hold down the Apple key it's, I'm going to be the command key which is just going to allow me to start reshaping these and again 
the clear arrow selected first when I hold down the command key. That's what it goes back to. See, notice I can't just move that first one. I'm going to go get my reshaping tool. And that's going to allow me to bring that down. I can get my clear arrow and start doing the curves that I want. Now I want this to have almost like a curve. I'm trying to imagine the way it goes around the arm. There you go. Anytime that this happens, just get my reshaping. And I can perfectly shape these pieces. Let's continue. I'm going to put a mesh point right here. That's going to allow me to bring that in. Good. This one is almost in the right place. I just need to give it a little curve. There we go. This one, just pull it away so I can see. And I'm going to go down further. Now notice it's moving. This is getting narrow and that's coming out. Just by adding in a new point, I can then shift it into position. And that you have to keep track, or you should say you have to keep notice of these ins inside pieces. As this gets more narrow, these should also move in. You notice how these toggles, they're overlapping. I'm just going to pull them out so they don't have that overlap anymore. This one here needs to be kind of reworked. Come in, move, move this one in, move this one in. It's also easier when, as you're doing this, to make sure certain certain lines stay on the uh, a highlight. If you see a highlight, try to stay with it if you can. And in this case, I wasn't. So let's pull this back. And we'll make sure it stays with the highlight. And you know what's good about this is I'm being forced to rework some of this. And I think what you're going to notice is it's pretty easy to rework. You know, you, as long as you're not adding a lot of points in the beginning, you know, you, you're going to have it fairly easy to do the reworking. Don't go crazy adding points. It's just not going to be worth it because you're going to need to do a lot of adjusting in the early stages. And once that, once that's all done, once you have that uh, that mesh laid in and it's right, then you can add as many as you need as you go. But don't do it in the beginning. In the beginning, try to use as few points as possible. That way you'll end up with uh, a better and more accurate uh, final piece. So let's just uh, get this. I think we got a couple more. Now don't be afraid if something doesn't match up exactly, if, you, it's, if it's too hard to get some of these points to line up. You can, you're more than welcome, it's your illustration, you do whatever you need to do, but, uh, you know, for the most part, you can make up your own details as you go along as well. So I think I'm pretty close right here. You know, that's, I can go further, but I, I don't think that's uh, going to be necessary. But there you go, I'm going to add one more right here. There you go. There's my mesh start. You can see right here it's a little outside. I don't care. I know that it's it's fairly accurate and it's good. I'm going to zoom out just a moment. I'm going to look at it. Now that I see, you can see the very basics. Now it's time to come back in and say, well, I need to add my mesh for highlights. And right now I'm, I'm doing all the verticals. If you click in something, it doesn't happen, just click off and then come right back on and click again and it'll work. And now you can see all my verticals are done, but now I want to add all my horizontals. And notice that they're all filling in very accurately. They're all staying, it's, it's as if it's being done by a CAD program and not by a program like Adobe Illustrator. It's really staying very uniform. It looks like a wireframe from uh, any 3D program and I'm, when I click off you'll see what I mean 
and you can see when they get a little closer you could still adjust that but you won't need to when it's a big area like this it's so broad and so big that you will not have to adjust so that's how you reshape your simple square into a complex shape and if I go back to artwork you can see that it's all still white and now I'm going to go into another tutorial for actu actually coloring this